So how was prophecy even given to us? Can we bank upon what he said in his word? Yes, you can, because the Bible says that you can. Every prophecy will be fulfilled. We have a word now more confirmed than ever before because of the days that we live in. Praise God. So for the next several weeks, we want to be focusing in on Bible prophecy, the importance of Bible prophecy. If we don't understand the ABCs or the elementary process of prophecy, we'll not be able to understand about when we begin to read, as for instance in Daniel chapter 2, about you know all these metal, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Or we won't understand, let's say, the book of Daniel chapter 7, when it talks about these beasts, and it talks about lions, and it talks about when having wings, and it talks about a bear, and it's got three ribs in its mouth. Then you have a, a leopard that has, what, Four heads on it and wings, you know. You wouldn't be able to understand that unless we get into the, to the elementary stages, you might call it, or the way that God has set it up in His Word so that we can understand these. Remember, we never to put on some kind of a, well, we've read these things and we think that maybe it means. Bible, and we're talking about, we're talking about symbols being used. God will always give us the answer, isn't that right? Always in His Word what these symbolic representations will be so he always gives it to us and we need to apply that this will help us better to understand the books of the two things we'll focus on Daniel and Revelation why because in Daniel and Revelation we must identify the power right this power that tries to sit in the throne room of God the one that says he's going to do what he's going to take over he's going to be like God he's going to think to change what Times and laws. He persecutes and kills God's people. He helps, as it were, behind the scenes to pass Sunday laws. You see, we need to make sure we understand who this little horn power is. If we understand it, then it'll be easier for us to accept because then we can look at signs of the times going on and say, you know what, this does apply. Bible has said it, history has said it, and what's going on in the world also says the same things. And by God's grace, it'll help us to understand it and we can accept it better. We need to understand, at least in my opinion, the main players in the book of Daniel and Revelation. The ones that write the Bible points out. The ones that are guilty of trying to change God's truth into a lie. I might say this. God does not play games. We might play games. We might try to play church. God never does. God is serious about what He's revealed to us in the historical aspect of the Bible that looked at prophecy, God always wants us to know in advance, does He not? Things that are going to happen and things that are going to take place. And He always gives sufficient, we're going to learn as we go, He gives sufficient information so that we can make a proper decision. And that we, why? Because we're going to be held accountable. God gives information, that right? He's given you a brain, you can decipher it, and then He holds us accountable for the information which he gives to us. How reliable quickly is prophecy? Our times have gone down. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 9. How reliable. And then this all plays into the part, the things that we'll be looking at. The Bible said there in 2 Peter 1, 19, it says, For we have a more sure word of what? Prophecy. More sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, huh. as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart do you see what's all said here we have also a more sure word of prophecy the bible said we have here and this is this is another when you translate it here a prophet prophetic word made more sure or now more confirmed we have a word now more confirmed than ever before because of the days that we live in praise god until what? And it's going to continue to grow until the coming of what? It says here, Son of Man, here it says, For that day star rise in your heart, or till the coming of Jesus Christ. This is our hope. This is our encouragement. You see, the disciples had a firm conviction about Christ. When they were converted, finally converted, they had a real conviction of Jesus Christ. What? How did they have this firm conviction? Because of the way he lived his life. Because they were reading Scripture, and the Scripture said this is a way that the Messiah will act. 
This is what the Messiah will do. And they were watching Jesus intently. The things that he did, the things that he said, the miracles he performed. And they looked and they said, this has to be the Messiah. If we're looking that way at the signs of the times in the world today, we will look and say, we are in the end. There's no doubt about it. Why? Because it's the way Jesus lived his life. But why? Because he fulfilled all Old Testament prophecies concerning himself. Not just a few, but all of them, praise God. If you had time, you could read, just jot it down, Acts chapter 2, like verses 22 through 26. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 18. You can read Acts chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And this gives you more information on this. Their, remember, their connection with Christ gave them unmistakable you know, we're talking about here, basis for their Christian life. Your connection with Christ right now, think about it. How is it today? Can we really count upon Him? Can we bank upon what He said in His Word? Even though it seems like so far out? Yes, you can, because the Bible says that you can. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God has prophesied here in these last days. Every prophecy will be fulfilled the confirmation of truthfulness, reliability of prophecy. The two books, quickly, about four minutes left. Two books, the Bible we're studying is going to be more, look, just looking at the bits and pieces of it so it will help us because we, then there's a lot of identifying things that have to take place. The books of Daniel and certainly the book of Revelation. Both foretell what? Future events. Don't you want to know? See, most of the world that really, I guess, don't want to know. It, it's, it's frightening them. The preachers are saying in the pulpit today, don't be studying Revelation. Don't be studying these books. Oh, they're too scary. You can't figure it out. Well, that's the devil himself. There's no doubt about it. Maybe because they don't understand. I'm not trying to say judge one way or the other. But that's not, that not, not Jesus Christ speaking at all. Was Daniel a prophet of God? Matthew 24, verse 15, Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking about Daniel. He said, we need to pay, keep an eye on Daniel here in the last days. You know what he said? When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. This end, what does it do? This event tells of the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. And the time, notice, when the symbol of pagan Rome was put up, as it were, within the temple area. Jesus believed that Daniel was a prophet because he said he was here. Jesus believed that Daniel wrote the book of Daniel. Does that make sense? The book of Daniel clearly points out the coming of the Messiah, you know, in the 2300 days. Daniel 8, 14, 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The book of Daniel was so, so heavy duty and heavy duty now because it points out exactly when Jesus would arrive on the scene as the Messiah, when he would die the year, and then the message going into the, what, the Gentiles. You see, yeah, and then what? Then you had 1810. It, it leads you right up to the judgment hour just quickly, right, 1844. There's no doubt about it. Jesus said, this is the one you ought to watch. What? The Holy Spirit impressed him what to write in the book. Messiah would appear at a certain time. Can we believe Scripture? Absolutely. The book of Daniel, we know, was sealed till the end times. Do you know it's till the end times? But you know the book of Daniel is unsealed now, till the end of time. I wish we, had, we don't have time today to go into it, what we figure, look at at the end of time. And certainly it would be when the wound was given to the beast. And you say, well, I don't know about the wound. I don't know about the beast power, whatever it is. So that's why we're going through what we're going through right here. But at the time of the end, the book of Daniel would be opened up. It would be unsealed. Where are we at today? Daniel 12, verse 4, quickly it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. We can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are in the time of the end. The book of Daniel is open for us today. Compare it with the book of Revelation. It said, what men will go forward, you know, here and there, and knowledge shall increase. Daniel's prophecy would be understood in these last days, according to Daniel chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. These prophecies would be understood. Go thy way. These things will come back at the end of time. And we'll just quickly say, with prophecies of the book of Revelation, that we'll have to look at some of these beasts. We'll have to look at some of these you know, powers and nations and kingdoms that all would rise. History bears fact to them. And then we can boil it down to that man of sin and revealing, bringing out that mystery of iniquity, that little horn power, must be exposed because God said so because the world is following after the beast. And there are those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Somebody, by the grace of God, you know, have the courage and the love of Jesus and the truth enough to expose this power that's leading the world captive. 
God wants us to do that. We study Revelation. You know why people say don't do it? Huh. The Bible says very, very clearly because it is that, you notice this, the prophet, Revelation is just a revealing of whom? Of Jesus Christ. And Revelation 1, 3 just simply says, Blessed is he that readeth, right? And he that hears the words of this prophecy and keep those things therein. A blessing is pronounced upon those who read, study, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. So we need to do that with our eyes and hearts and ears open so that we can understand what's going on in the world today because God said, I'm going to reveal it right first before it takes place so that you will know, so you'll not be taken unawares. We just have a couple seconds left. I'm going to go out as we pray. Let's pray together, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, truly we thank you for your sweet spirit. Thank you for the truth that you've given in your word. Thank you that we can have confidence in your word based upon our prophecy already being fulfilled and certainly that which is not fulfilled yet, but you have guaranteed it. You said, I have written it. I've been, the Holy Spirit has impressed men of God, holy men of God, and they wrote it down in a book and it will come to pass. I will bring it to pass. So, Lord, help us, we pray, open our hearts and our minds and our lives that we may see and hear and understand the hour in which we live. Signs of the time are everywhere. Help us to put it together the way you'd have it to be. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer for every one of your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>